The better question is, why do you have socks? G'day Earthlings, Dr. Rank here, and welcome to Screen School, where everyone's childhood gets ruined, including my own. Case in point, VeggieTales, which later this month will celebrate its 25th anniversary. 25 years! Man, do I feel old. With its catchy music, groundbreaking animation, and Sunday school-friendly morals, VeggieTales has been a favourite of Christian families all over the world. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me take you through a typical episode. The series is set up as a children's TV show hosted by the serious Bob the Tomato and the hilarious Larry the Cucumber. At the start of each episode, they receive a message from a young fan of the show asking about a moral dilemma they're having. We then go to either one or two short stories addressing the issue, acted out by the various VeggieTales cast members. These stories are usually either biblical reenactments or movie parodies. Halfway through the episode, there's also silly songs with Larry. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Oh, it's all so clear now. At the end, Bob and Larry discuss the lesson can be learned from the stories, read a relevant verse from the Bible, and remind the audience that God made you special, and he loves you very much. Now, I'm not here to dispute the morals of the series. I trust that everything VeggieTales teaches is consistent with what Christians, myself included, believe is right. No, today I want to take a closer look at the characters doing the teaching, the veggies. Specifically, I want to focus on their biology. And let me tell you right now, these guys are not veggies. Our first clue is that they have similar basic bodily functions to humans. They breathe air, as demonstrated in Gideon Tuba Warrior when Larry blows into a blocked tuba and turns blue from oxygen deprivation. They consume food, as seen in silly songs like Supper Hero and Pizza Angel. And, of course, what goes in must come out. I need to go to the bathroom! This suggests that they have organs inside them, like lungs, stomachs, and bladders, as well as skeletal structures to support them. But we don't have to speculate about that. In the novel, Larry Boy and the Abominable Trash Man, Larry goes on a stakeout to try to catch a garbage monster that's been terrorizing Bumbleberg. The narrative text tells us that, quote, Larry had several scared bones in his body, not to mention a scared tongue, scared heart, scared spleen, and scared gallbladder. So the veggies have organs just like ours. There's just one problem with this creature. It doesn't photosynthesize. Why do we care if it takes pictures? No, no, no. photosynthesize. Plants turn sunlight into energy. It's how they grow. Exactly, Archibald. Real vegetables, and all plants in general, have a substance in their cells called chlorophyll, a pigment that not only gives them their greenish colour, but also aids in the process of converting sunlight into energy. The VeggieTales characters, however, are clearly getting their energy by putting edible matter into their mouths and digesting it. Therefore, they cannot be real vegetables or even real plants. OBJECTION! Uh, I hate to burst your bubble, Doc, but carnivorous plants do exist. Ever heard of the Venus flytrap? Or the butterwort? Or the pitcher plant? OBJECTION! Do you see any resemblance between these two? OBJECTION! Okay, so Larry isn't a flytrap. But that doesn't mean he's not a vegetable. Maybe they're just anthropomorphic versions of vegetables. OBJECTION! What's the point of having organisms that take on the role of humans in a world where humans still exist? In Mary Larry and the True Light of Christmas, we see a nativity set with carvings of Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, and each of them are portrayed as human. Even an Easter carol has the human image of the Messiah in stained glass. And in case you're dismissing this as Big Idea's rule of not portraying Jesus as a veggie, which yes, is a real thing that they have, in several episodes from the early 2010s, such as Pistachio and Sweet Pea Beauty, the moral question is delivered in the form of a video chat with a human child! The veggies haven't replaced the humans, they're coexisting with them. HOLD IT! That doesn't prove they aren't vegetables. 
Maybe they're the result of genetic mutations from selective breeding. There's a full video about that subject by Super Colin Brothers you can check out by clicking the card. Interesting hypothesis, but it doesn't hold up when you consider how the veggie's reproduction works. You can go forth and multiply. I have no idea what that means. Case in point, the poppy seed family from Princess and the Popstar. Pepper and Mr. Poppy Seed are both cucumbers, but everyone else in the family is a carrot. And all of them are biologically related, which presents a big issue. Carrots and cucumbers are not the same species. Each species of anything requires a certain number of chromosomes to reproduce. Carrots have 18 chromosomes, while cucumbers have 14. Now, in this particular scenario, it's not too big a deal. The offspring would have an even 16, but it wouldn't look 100% like a cucumber or 100% like a carrot. It would be some weird fusion of the two, which is clearly not what we see here. And that's assuming that a fruit and a vegetable are even biologically compatible in the first place. So the various types of veggie that we see in the show are less of their own individual species, and more akin to different breeds. OBJECTION! Think about this within the context of the show, Doc. They're actors telling the story. Sure, Laura Carrot is playing the role of Larry the Cucumber's daughter, but that doesn't mean they're related off-screen as well. OBJECTION! Yes, Cedric, they are actors. Which is exactly why their veggie type is so important here. When the producers of a live-action movie or TV show are casting family members, they typically try to get people who, appearance-wise, could realistically be related. Like how the entire family in The Cosby Show is African-American, or all the Weasleys in Harry Potter are redheads. It wouldn't make sense for two Negro parents with black hair and brown eyes to produce a Caucasian daughter with blonde hair and blue eyes, would it? No, because it's not biologically possible. And the characters of VeggieTales work the same way. Why would they have a family of cucumbers and carrots if it was impossible? Fine then. If they're not mutants, but they share the same world as humans, how do we explain them? I was stumped on this too for a while. But then I remembered the piece of evidence that brought this episode about in the first place. Their hands, or rather the lack thereof. Ever since the very first episode, this series has been constantly making self-referential jokes about how they accomplish several everyday tasks without any limbs. The main exceptions are the Larry Boy villains who either have artificial arms or use other parts of their plant-based anatomy like roots and branches as substitutes. Such an awful deed as this should only be done by the most awful villain. And I could out-awful you with one root behind my back! But everyone else just gets to let objects float there in front of them. They must be holding them somehow, right? Then I remembered what it says in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. What we do not see. Maybe they just have invisible appendages. But of course, as any Ace Attorney fan will tell you, evidence is everything. A Snoodle's tail introduces a new species called the Snoodle, which is notable for wearing winged backpacks, and white gloves with no visible arm. And guess what we see in the sequel story, Snoodlerella? Bob the Tomato wearing the same gloves. Boom, evidence. The veggies are definitely holding things with invisible arms. Hold it! But, but that's impossible, right, Doc? No creature on Earth has invisible body parts. Not even mad science could produce that. Exactly, no creature. On. Earth. You don't mean- Yes, Philippe, I do mean. VeggieTales is a kids show hosted by aliens. But of course, even I know that's a crazy enough statement to send me to the island of perpetual tickling. So for more evidence, let's take a look at the show's sister series, 321 Penguins. In episode 1, Trouble on Planet Wait Your Turn, there's a vacuum alien that looks and sounds like Larry. What? Oh, you're the guy from the Federation. We didn't call about the cutting line. And guess who's credited as the voice actor for this character? 
not series co-creator Mike Naraki, but Larry the Cucumber himself. And before you dismiss it as just a fun little Easter egg, check out this clip from Runaway Pride at Light Station Kilowatt. Uh, who is he? Who is he? Buzz Aldrin? Robert Goulet? Larry the Cucumber? Kevin, a penguin astronaut whose job is to visit alien planets on an almost daily basis, knows who Larry is. And if that's still not enough to convince you that these shows are in the same universe, in VeggieTales, The Wonderful World of Autotainment, we get special guest appearances by the Ventrilomatic and Rusty, who first appeared in 321 Penguins. VeggieTales exists in a universe with extraterrestrial life forms in it, so why can't the veggies themselves be ETs? This would also explain the existence of talking non-veggie characters like the Fib, the Mirror from Sweepy Beauty, and Khalil the Caterpillar. And with that, we have the full story of VeggieTales in-universe origins. The veggies were created on some unknown planet and found their way to Earth. But rather than trying to destroy the planet or enslave the human race, they found a way to coexist with them, to make friends with them. And, most importantly, at least from a Christianity perspective, to spread the good news about Jesus to kids, to adults, and to the ends of the earth, and beyond. And that, Earthlings, is the true message behind VeggieTales as a whole. That no matter who you are, what you look like, or where you come from, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Class dismissed. Thank you for watching, please give a like and subscribe today Cause I got much more to say over here I still really have to go to Oh, and I've also got some video game challenge runs And now that this song is done, I'll disappear